What's going on everybody? I'm Kevin with Custom Night Vision and we are back to talk about this tube comparison that we did, the last one, the Tube Shootout 2.0. Um, I would like to address some of the questions, requests, concerns, and some outright outrage over the last video that we did. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and address some of the comments that I feel like require a response of some sort. Um, had a couple people say that we choose, choose tubes that were too high spec. If you wanna get a, a look through some mediocre tubes, go to your local airsoft match. There's probably a bunch of Omni tubes out there being used. You can check them out. I mean, when we're putting this on film for reference, we want not necessarily outliers, but like the highest uh, possible examples we can find of each or at least from what we have uh, to make this nice to watch. I mean, if I had a bunch of shitty tubes on here, like the video would look terrible. So is it unfair? I don't know, it's up to you, but at any rate, that's just kind of my thought process behind it. And that's why we selected the tubes that we did. According to one commenter, we cherry picked a poor performing Photonis tube. This is just plainly not true. That does not benefit me at all to do that. We are uh, pretty substantially financially invested in Photonis inventory and it would behoove us to sell that product. I picked a random tube out of our giant box of tubes based on what was on the data sheet. I'm sorry it traced in the video. That's like I said many times, that is not manufacturer specific, that is tube dependent. There's no rhyme or reason to why some tubes, in my opinion, my experience, why some tubes trace worse than others. That one was just kind of a, uh, Bad luck, I guess. Outside of those lighting conditions, that was still still a great tube, but to satisfy uh, your insatiable uh, frustration, I picked another random tube uh, out of the lineup, and it is kind of similar. Uh, 31.02 SNR, uh, 78 line pair, uh, so 2419 overall for your merit. And another thing that was talked about was I'm misrepresenting what these gain figures mean. Sorry, um, let me go ahead and address that now. The Photonis gain figures are not to be compared like number for number to like the domestic tubes. They measure them differently. Um, sometimes I forget that, or sometimes I assume that people understand things that I take for granted. So basically this gain number, the way I understand it, multiply it by pi 3.14 and you're going to get a pretty close uh, apples to apples comparison on those gain figures the same goes for uh, the ebi numbers those aren't measured the same way as domestically manufactured tubes uh, typically we multiply that number by 10 to get uh, an equivalent were the devices on full gain yes all of the devices that we used with manual gain were on maximum gain uh, the areas that we chose to film were too bright so in the previous video, the first area that we filmed at was actually very dark. There was no moon. Um, it was, you know, based on the lunar charts, there was zero moon present, zero illumination. All of the ambient light was pretty far away. Uh, it was not really affecting where we were filming that much. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and redo some video with these tubes in a dark closet here in our office building that I can say is a lot darker than that environment. We use this area when we're ch testing tubes that have um, suspected emission points. Uh, it's, it's so dark, like when you go in there and shut the door, you really gotta know what's in there cause you'll trip and fall. Like you can't see your feet, it's that dark. Also, highlight performance is a thing. So the other two locations that we did that had uh, more light that's a valuable resource for people as well. Um, I understand, you know, I'm, I'm in the camp of like, I want night vision that works the best in like no light situations. I totally get that. But it's also important to have night vision that works well when there is a lot of light present, because if you're anywhere close to an urban environment or if you have to move into that urban environment, L3 tubes, not gonna work as well as a Photonis tube when there's a lot of street lights blast in your face. There is on these data sheets, a, a section that is highlight resolution. Check that out next time you're comparing 
data sheet side by side, you might be surprised. Finally, from the super gain video, several people wanted to see super gain tubes in darker environments. So to our, our initial four tubes that we compared side by side, we've added one of the same devices that we used in the super gain comparison, still sitting over there, haven't taken it apart yet or sold it. Um, just real quick, it is a 37.1 line pair, or a 37.1 SNR, 72 line pair, 0.4 EVI, uh, 112,276 gain. Yeah, so great tube. Um, outfitted just like all the others with a, a RPO Optics 3.0 Objective 2.0 eyepiece. So no variables there. Uh, we're going to go into the closet now and set it up. And we're actually going to show you how we're doing that. So there's no mystery. There's no smoke and mirrors. You know, we're, we're doing this for y'all to make uh, the best purchasing decision. This isn't about what I want to sell you because I'll sell you all of it. It doesn't, it doesn't behoove me to sell one over the other. We have all of them. So let's go in there. All right, this is the room that uh, we have that's best for, you know, what you want to see. Um, I've already kind of started to set this up. We've got a Snellen uh, Big E optical chart here. I'm sure you've all seen this at the optometrist. It, it's just there to provide something to um, compare the resolution or each tube's ability to resolve images. I've set this up. Uh, I don't know what I did with my tape measure, but this piece of tape here on the floor is exactly 10 feet from the wall, the, the leading edge, this side. So we're going to set the camera up so the edge of the objective is in line with this 10 foot mark just to keep it consistent in review 10 feet from that wall with the Snell and Biggie optical chart on it. We're going to do all five tubes. Um, if you want to come in here, I'll turn the light off. We're using a Sony FX3 with a uh, 2470 on it. Um, it gets really dark in here. I don't know if you can see anything. There's a little bit of glow coming off the camera that may be illuminating me a little bit, but I'm going to open an app on my phone that measures it's a light meter. So currently in this room, the light coming in from under the door, we're at 0 0.04037 lux. 0 0.003 foot candles. 044 004. That's foot candles, that's lux. I'm going to go into what that means you can look it up, but um, we're going to go get all the night vision units, come back in here and hold on. Is this better? Do it like a scary, like a well, fucking fireside shit, shot. Dude. Okay. All right. It's so dark in here. All right. Let me turn the lights back on. <laughs> all right. We're back. We're going to go get all the night vision units, set the tripod up in here and start the side by side comparison. All right. We're in the dark closet. Um, this is the NNVT tube. We're going to start, I guess, from, we're just going to start with this one. We'll do the Photonist next and then go up from there. Um, yeah, I mean, again, there's not a lot for me to say. We're not moving around. There's nothing to look at but that eye chart. I'll do the in-body zoom a little bit so you can see that's in crisp, crisp focus. Back it back out. All right, we're gonna switch it up and go to the next tube. Or should we open the, crack the door? Yeah, crack the door and show it. All right. Make it. We're, gonna, we're gonna crack the door a little bit, bring a little light in, see what that does for resolution. Clarity is, yeah. Cleans up all that noise. Door shut again. It is extremely dark in here. All right, next tube. All right, here we are with tube number two. This is the Photonis Echo. This is the new tube that I picked at random from a line of Photonis tubes and installed in the same uh, PVS-14. Uh, it is at max gain. Just to confirm that, I guess we can go up and down with the gain for all the units in this particular video. So that's all the way down. Bring the gain all the way up. Maximum gain. I'm going to use the in 
body zoom to confirm we are in very crisp focus. Back out. Make sure that chart's dead center in the frame there. <clears throat> Give you a minute to assess. Again, this is the photonist tube. I'm gonna swing this door open, add a little bit of light to this very dark closet to show you the difference in clarity. I'm just cracking the door. Still pretty dark. I'm gonna close it. And there we go. Let's move on to the velvet tube. All right, we're on tube number three. Uh, this is the Elbit pH tube that we've used previously. Um, let me go ahead and cycle the game. If I can find the, okay. That's max gain. We'll cycle it down. It's all the way down. There we go, there is max gain. Elbit pH tube. Go ahead and zoom in with the camera body so we can see the focus. There we go. So we've got a really crisp focus on this device. Let's zoom back out. Let's sit here for a minute, let you assess. I'm gonna crack the door to this closet again. See how the light affects the performance of the tube. Go ahead and close the door again. That was the Elbit pH tube. Go ahead and switch tubes. I'm gonna go to the standard gain L3 tube next. Now we're on tube number four. This is the L3 filmless standard gain. Um, this tube is built, it is installed in a, a Nocturne Industries Tonto. Uh, we've used this tube a lot for filming, so we don't see the need to put it in another housing. Um, suffice to say it is at maximum gain because the Tonto does not have adjustable gain. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. We have a very crisp focus. There's no gain to articulate per se. I'm gonna go ahead and crack the door here. See what that additional light does to the image integrity. Go ahead and shut the door again. Give you a minute to review and assess the image that you were looking at. swap it out. All right, this is the final tube in the comparison. Um, this is a L3 filmless high gain tube. Um, let's see, zoom in to confirm we have a good crisp focus on the optical chart. Zoom back out. Go ahead and run through the gain level all the way down back up. Looks pretty good. Give you a minute to review. I'm gonna go ahead and crack the door a little bit, see what happens to the image integrity when we add some light. Close the door again. It looks good. All right, guys, we just uh, compared all five of these tubes. Five, not four this time. Uh, in a closet, I'm not in the closet. Um, I'm not out of the, God damn it. Not out of the closet either. Um, so anyway, night vision, right. Um, 
yeah, I hope this satisfied all of your longing desires and requests for very specific, super micro niche uh, night vision theory. Uh, yeah, I think this pretty much summed up kind of what we came to the same conclusion in last time. This is word vomit and I don't, I should have write, wrote something down. Okay, let's sum up what we've seen. Uh, I'm not going to, I guess, give you my opinion because that's a verboten. And uh, I really just want you to look at this, this video, uh, make your conclusions, let us know what you think. I know which one my favorite was, but you know, I'm not gonna tell you now because that would be bias. Love y'all guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe to this channel, get down in the comments. Let's fist fight with our words and um, yeah, like this video, share it with your friends. Have a great day.